video introduces Maple's facilities for working with finitely presented groups. A finitely presented group is a group defined by means of a finite number of generators and a finite number of defining relations. It is one of the principal ways in which a group may be represented on the computer. It is vir virtually the only representation that effectively allows us to compute with many infinite groups. To begin working with groups in Maple, we first load the group theory package using the with command. This makes all the commands of the package available at the top level and redefines certain syntaxes so that they are interpreted in the correct context as having group theoretic significance. In the main, this redefines the angle bracket operator so that it is interpreted as a constructor for finite presentations and not solely for creating vectors and matrices. When the command is terminated by a semicolon, a sorted list of all the commands in the group theory package is returned. To suppress this output, terminate the command with a colon. To create a finitely presented group, we use the usual textbook notation involving angle brackets and a vertical bar or a pipe to separate the sequence of generators from the defining relations. So here is an example of a free abelian group on generators x and y uh, using a defining relation expressing the fact that those two generators commute. Maple, <coughs> and we can ask Maple whether the group is abelian, in fact, by using the is abelian command and it returns true. We can ask Maple for the order of the group by using the group order command. In this case, Maple recognizes that the group is infinite. Looking at another example, we can write down our favorite presentation for the alternating group of degree 5. Now I want to point out that uh, it's necessary to include at least one equation in the, in the uh, defining relations, as we did in both of these examples. Uh, the, not every relator needs to be a, def a relation with an equation, but at least one does, so that Maple is able to recognize the syntax as a group presentation and not a um, matrix or vector construction. Now that we've defined the presentation, we can vi visualize it. And we're going to draw now the Cayley graph of this group. And you might want to enlarge this a little bit to make it a little easier to see. And now rotating this around, we can see the nice icosahedral symmetry of the Cayley graph in three dimensions. One of the difficulties you encounter when working with finitely presented groups is that almost any interesting question you might ask turns out to be undecidable in general. This isn't simply a matter of nobody having been clever enough to work out how to answer such questions. It is a fact that for most such questions there can be no general algorithm to compute an answer. However, this does not preclude us from trying to answer interesting questions in special cases or for special classes of groups. Let's take a look at another example. So here we'll define a group, G, with four generators, A, B, C, and D. And we're going to make these involutions. And we'll introduce the, the following uh, cyclic relations. Now if we try again the is abelian command on this group G, we'll see that we get an exception raised. Maple is telling us here that for a general finitely presented group there's no way to determine whether it's abelian. Uh, if we happen to know the group is finite, we could convert it to a permutation group, 
and try it that way. Um, however, by taking another route, we can see, checking the order of the group, that this is a very simple group. It's, it's a sixth group of order two. So it turns out that the presentation used to define G is unnecessarily complicated. And in some cases, Maple can produce a less complicated presentation for a given group. The simplify command attempts to produce a less complicated presentation for a finitely presented group. It uses a heuristic algorithm to apply these transformations to a finite presentation in an attempt to reduce the complexity of the presentation. In this case, it's extremely successful. Now, Maple is not always able to simplify a presentation down to what might turn out to be, in some sense, the simplest possible. But now that this presentation has been reduced to a particularly simple form, we can ask the Isabellian command to look at the, the simpler presentation, and because it's, it's so trivial, it's able to recognize immediately that the group is abelian. There are many ways to construct finitely presented groups in Maple other than by directly entering a presentation. Many group constructors have a form option, which, uh, given the value fp group as a string, uh, causes them to produce a finitely presented group rather than uh, what is normally the default, a permutation group. Maple includes a database of all the finite groups of order up to 511, and these can be accessed as finitely presented groups using the small group command. So here we ask for the small group of order 32, we ask for the fifth group, and we t tell Maple to produce the group in the form of a finitely presented group, rather than the default, which is a permutation group. And we see that it produces a presentation. Similarly, a large number of commands in the group theory package are constructors for various types of groups. And in most cases, these can be uh, used to produce finitely presented groups as well. For example, for the dihedral group command, we ask for the dihedral group of degree 5. And again, give it the form equals fp group option, and it produces a finally presented group which uh, has a special uh, printing in this case. Uh, another uh, group which uh, prints specially is the quaternion group. However, you can still ask for it as a finally presented group and ask for the relators. Here we have an example of the alternating group, uh, degree 6 in this case. And again, because the default is a permutation group, we have to tell Maple to give us a finally presented group instead. Now, in this case, there is no special pretty printer, so we see the finite presentation. And finally, we can ask for a cyclic group of whatever finite order wish, and we will get a presentation. Now we can also ask for a cyclic group of infinite order, and we will get a finite presentation because there is no permutation representation in this case. Another important way in which finitely presented groups arise is as subgroups of other pre-existing finitely presented groups. To see how this works, let's start with a free, grant, free group of rank 2 on two generators A and B. Now we'll define a subgroup H of F by using the subgroup constructor and listing some words that we want to be generators for this subgroup.
So here we use the subgroup command. We provide a list of generating words for the subgroup, and we tell April that this is to be a subgroup of the pre-existing finitely presented group F, which happens to be a free group. Now, of course, by Nielsen Schreier, H is itself a free group. And Maple responds by computing a presentation, in this case a free presentation, for the subgroup H. And we can see here, by counting the generators, that this is a group of rank 5, a free group of rank 5. But we could also give, if we don't like the default names that Maple chooses for this subgroup, we can also give them our own names. So I'm just specifying the names for all of the subgroup generators by uh, supplying equations. And Maple uh, responds by, in the same way, showing that these are in fact free generators for the subgroup. Now, now that we have the subgroup H of F, one of the things we can do with finitely presented groups is compute the index. We use the index command give it the name of the subgroup and the name of the parent group. And the subgroup in this case is H, the parent group is F, and Maple will compute the index, which in this case is 4. Now because these are free presentations of free groups, the rank uh, of H and the rank of F is just the number of, of their generators. And we can check now that the Schreier index formula is satisfied. So the number of generators of the subgroup H, the, the, the rank of the free group H, the free subgroup H is the index times uh, one less than the, the rank of the parent free group F plus one. So this is the Schreier index formula. Another operation that's applicable to subgroups of finitely presented groups is a computation of the right cosets, or left. We'll do right in this case. So we can ask for the right cosets of H and F. And Maple responds by printing out the cosets as a set. And the representative command we can map onto that set and we can see the representatives are the identity B, BA, and BAB, which is also visible here in, in the cosets. As we noted earlier, many questions cannot be answered for general finitely presented groups. However, for a finitely presented group that happens to be finite, we can often answer questions by first converting it to a permutation group. So just as an example, let's take small group, the first small group of order 12, and we'll ask for it as a finitely presented group, call it G. Now if we want to know whether this group G is soluble, Meeple can't tell us, because in general we can't detect whether a finitely presented group is soluble, and this group isn't sufficiently simple that Meeple knows how to do a special case algorithm. But we can convert it first to a permutation group. And to do this, you simply pass the finitely presented group to the permutation group constructor. We'll call the resulting permutation group P. Now P is a permutation group isomorphic to the finitely presented group G. And now we can, because there are uh, many more methods implemented for permutation groups, we can answer questions about this isomorphic copy P of the original group G that we were interested in. And I'll also take the opportunity to illustrate the use of the context menu. So if we right click on the, pres on the, um, uh, the group, the, the set of generators, we see that there's a group operations context menu. And here we can query various things. So we might ask about a property such as whether the group is nilpotent. 
In this case, the group is not nilpotent. Again, under group operations, we might, since the group's not nilpotent, we might ask for the hypercenter. Or we could do a visual visualization. So in the group operations context menu, under general, we can ask Maple to draw the Cayley table of the group. I'm going to enlarge this a little bit to make it a little clearer. Now you can see that the elements of the group have been labeled with words corresponding to the uh, generators of the original family presented group. And this is because the isomorphic permutation group P has had its generators labeled with the corresponding generators in the finally presented group. And the labels command returns that set of labels. Now finally, I'd like to note that any finitely uh, finite finitely presented group can be converted to and from Cayley table group. A Cayley table group is one represented by its Cayley table, its multi the multiplication table for the group operation. So to do this, we simply use the Cayley table group constructor and pass the finally presented group, in this case, G. And that produces a Cayley table group, which we've called C. Uh, this is suitable, of course, only for very small finite groups. And if we had a Cayley table group to begin with, we could produce a finally presented group from it by using the FP group constructor. And the result is a finitely presented group. Now, this finite presentation is the Cayley presentation based off of the multiplication table of the group. So all the relators, the generators are um, the group elements and the relators all have length three. So this is a case in which you would definitely want to use the simplify command to reduce the presentation to something much more manageable. So this concludes the tutorial on working with finally presented groups in Maple. Thank you for watching.